the question becomes, do you see that there is a power in the universe that is greater than we are? Do you see that this power is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent? <clears throat> Which simply means that it's all powerful, it's all seeing, it's all knowing, and it is present everywhere and within everything. It knows what to do. It knows how to do it. And it knows when to do it, even though we sometimes think that we know better. Anybody been there? Okay. So many, many, many moons ago, I <coughs> spoke my word into the universe. <coughs> and... As many of you know, my taste in music is rather eclectic, because you've been here for a few Sundays. But my favorite, my all-time favorite, is jazz. <coughs> and so <coughs> the thing that I spoke into the universe was that one day I would love to attend the jazz festival in Copenhagen. I forgot about that declaration completely and totally. So I was on the water taxi wandering through the canals of Copenhagen and we came to completion and there was another water taxi that went by with a qu jazz quintet on board and they were playing. And our guide said that there was also live jazz music going on in the square, the sitter, sit, center of the city. So I walked over to check it out. <clears throat> and I sat down on the bench, and I looked up, and there was a placard hanging between the two buildings that said, 2019 Copenhagen Jazz Festival. <laughs> Whoa! I couldn't have planned that if I tried. There was no way. So the power responds definitely, directly, and dynamically. Contact can be immediate. It can also be instantaneous. Or it can happen 10 years later when you least expect it. But the important thing is to pay attention to the clues, to listen to that still small voice. <coughs> There is something creative flowing through us at all times. Once we understand that it can be used, then we can prepare to receive the gift. And if we have faith, our dreams and our desires come true. Even if every living soul on the planet denies that it's possible, it still works. It simply works by appearing not to work. And because we are unique, our perception of that varies. One of the things that I found so amazing about exploring that part of Europe, there was water everywhere. And I was sharing with someone who lives there, the, in fact, the first host in uh, Oslo that I stayed with, how glorious it was to see all that green and all that water after coming from the desert. And she asked me where I was from. And I said, well, I said, I live in New Mexico. Oh, she said, I have a trip planned. I'm going to be hiking through the Continental Divide there. And she was all excited, right? So our perception varies of what God is in our experience. Dr. Ernest Holmes teaches us to never limit our view of life by any past experience. And before I left to go on sabbatical, Jane took me to the other side 
of the mountain. I hadn't been over there since I initially came to Candidate. I forgot that there was green in the desert, right? So it just depends on your perspective. It is our responsibility to evolve our own consciousness. And there are two ways that we do that. One is through self-discovery. And the second is through discovery of the self that is hidden within everyone we meet. <coughs> when we're in self-discovery and we're in conscious union with the Great Spirit, we are always guided towards our highest and our best. So on the last day, I was debating about whether I should do a little bit more sightseeing or start heading towards the train station. And so I heard that still small voice say, get on the tram and go. So I made my way, asked the tram driver if it Went to the train station, yes. And when I got off the tram, I got off with a gentleman, and I said to him, do you know which platform the train to the airport is on? And he looked at me as the tram that we just got off of was going into the future, and he said, the trains don't go to the airport. <laughs> you need to get back on the tram and I'm watching the tram go down the tracks. He said, oh, don't worry, there'll be another one in about 10 minutes. So <clears throat> as it turns out, that tram that I caught was the last one to the airport because it was Sunday. So when you listen to that still small voice, it guides you towards your greater good. And when you engage people from that place of positive acceptance, regardless of appearances, there is an energy of mutual cooperation. When we become aware of our own self-discovery, we can discover that same self in those that enter into our realm of experience. So the second aspect of evolving our consciousness is about the discovery of that self that is hidden in everyone. So while I was waiting for the train, the tram, to show up, <coughs> I engaged um, the gentleman who was sitting next to me. I can't help myself. I'm pretty gregarious. And it turns out that this young man had collected almost 6,000 votes and he was working on moving beyond the hierarchy, releasing the need for politicians. And when he reached that 6,000, he would be able to address environmental concerns globally without interference from anyone else. And I was like, wow. He's really found his calling. Wow. So when you have that passion within yourself, you can see it reflected in those that are around you. What we think is always shown to us. So it's important to eliminate the negative, to focus on the positive, and to develop the habit of affirmative thinking. And that is the gift of the science of mind teaching. We have something called spiritual mind treatment. And step three in that is to affirm your good. Or if you're from the South, like I am, I declare my good. And it is done. So we become a living embodiment of that good. And it's not done by holding thoughts, well, that, although that's how we begin. We take baby steps from wherever we are towards developing our spiritual muscle. And this doesn't happen overnight, 
But when we get to a place in consciousness where we know and embody that truth, and that, again, is the gift of this teaching, because with practice, I can prove the principle. I can prove that it works. So the law of mind, or the science of mind, which is just simply learning how to consciously direct our thinking, allows us to express our dreams and our desires through this incredible experience called life. Now, none of us are immune to what we refer to as the dark night of the soul. And you heard Michael Gott just sing about that. Have you ever found yourself lost and set adrift, wandering through life with no direction? I have. While I was on board the cruise ship, there was an altercation with my shore excursion. And <coughs> the person behind the customer service desk actually accused me of false representation. And so I was a little miffed by that, as you can imagine. And I raised my voice. I lost my temper. And to her credit, she said, this conversation's over, and she walked. <clears throat> now, the next morning, I woke up with a sore throat. Can you imagine why something like that would happen? Now, most people, when they have an illness, go to the doctor. And there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor. They actually are quite effective at treating the conditions. And sometimes we need the aspirin, or whatever, until we can figure out what the cause is that's underlying the experience that we are operating within. So I thought I knew what the problem was. And the throat, of course, has to do with communication as well as creativity. It's our inability to be heard as well as our inability to share what it is and who we are. And Michael got saying to this also, did you ever find the strength to reach out to somebody who could help? So I got on the phone and texted our prayer ministry team and said, help. And it wasn't until I got home, because this teaching is about doing the work, and I opened the book from Louise Hay that says, How to Heal Your Life, that I realized there was something deeper than what I had imagined the cause to be. And so the affirmation that she had in the book is this. I open my heart and sing the joys of love. Let's say that together. I open my heart and sing the joys of love. So what I discovered for myself was that there was an underlying energy, a discomfort with the idea of traveling alone. And fear puts a lower vibrational drain upon our energy. It keeps the lesser, lower timelines running. Whenever we fall victim to those negative persuasions, our spiritual evolution is put on the side burner. And there seems to be a belief <coughs> that those who are practicing the science of mind teaching never get sick. There seems to be a fear about going to see a practitioner. Maybe it's a sign of weakness. So if you learn only one thing this morning from this message, learn that the science of mind is an amoral teaching. We don't do right or wrong. 
we do the work. We go within to find out what the cause is for whatever is presenting itself in our experience. So sickness is simply spirit calling us to act, to take action, to delve deeper, to figure out what it is that has put us in that experience. And I know you've heard this quote before, but it's my favorite from Dr. Tom Costa. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not stop to build a condominium. Do you see that you are more than you believe yourself to be? Do you see that there is nothing in this world that can keep you from your destiny? The door is always open. Will you walk through? And rest assured, whenever we affirm a higher level of freedom and we invite it in, our fears, our doubts, our old beliefs will inevitably surface. So here's another affirmation. The infinite always has my back. Say that with me. The infinite always has my back. So when that moment of doubt surfaces, you deny the denial. You just say no, and you reaffirm your good. And when we finally get this, our world shifts. Dr. Ernest Holmes teaches us that the divine plan is one of freedom. And Liberty Under Law, which is the title of my talk this morning, is about finding that freedom. Beneath every experience, there is a belief system. Every situation is influenced by our perception. Nothing becomes real without our participation. Michael Gott, know the joy of returning to yourself. Awaken to the light after the darkness. And the veil between the seen and the unseen is getting thinner and thinner. Our words are the commands that create our experience. So it's up to us to be a responsible creator, to hold the highest possibility for Earth to focus on power, peace, joy, love, harmony, and light. And this causes a ripple effect that raises the level of vibration of the entire universe. The vibration of love has a higher light quotient. It's more influential in the co-creative realm. So I encourage you to stay conscious to align yourself with positive change. And this is the value of our community, that we can support one another as we practice. And that song from Michael Gott was about that energy, that energy of love and light and support. He was acknowledging his teacher. And so in this moment, I'm going to embarrass Sandy because <laughs> I want you to know that she was the impetuous for me to do this journey alone. She goes all over the place. If she can do it, I can do it, right? She does that all the time. So we are more than we believe ourselves to be. And when we begin to live from that place of faith, faith moment to moment, it empowers us to acknowledge ourselves to acknowledge one another, to celebrate our ouches as well as our triumphs. Receiving the higher energy of that light of love changes everything. And we're about to sing, God is my source. God gives me everything. Once I understand this, I have found liberty under law. And that liberty, my friends, is the impetuous 
of love. Thank you and namaste.